really a, a well played game. Boston College is a really good team, very talented, top to bottom. You can see it from pitch one of the ball game. They're they're good. In all my years of doing this, that's a game that I'll remember because of how the last three had gone and you know, how the trip to UCF went. And for our guys today to have two different lineups in play when you have an injury that doesn't allow somebody to go. We actually had two. So we had to restructure the whole thing. And uh, I can't say enough about the response of, of the group today. The at-bats. When you go up and down the lineup, you can find really good at bats from top to bottom. The whole game, I thought we, we played good defense, most specifically Nander at third. And that was something we hadn't really worked on. We didn't see that as an option out of the gate, but clearly today it became a necessity. And Kamaka went out there and did a nice job offensively. There wasn't a ton of action for the for the infield other than Nander, and he handled two slow rollers, the diving play in the first inning, and then the double play to end the game. So I'll remember this one for a long time because the last few have been tough, and we've got guys banged up, and it's not easy right now. And that, that was a good ball game. My Bowmeister, best inning I've seen him throw, the first inning. The best inning I've seen him throw, there probably wasn't a better inning thrown. Just command, he sequenced quality pitches, which is what we're trying to do. And the stuff is there, it's sometimes not sequenced and doesn't give him the ability to be efficient. Then he gets in the stretch and it's been a little different and it's up and they start to barrel balls and I felt like we needed to do something. Could he have gone back out? Yes, I thought we had relinquished the momentum of the game and I thought we needed to change it up and we went with Whitaker and that was not really what I felt wanted to do, I thought it was what I needed to do. And Bowmeister's going to get over this. He's going to get over the hump, and, and he's going to become an elite pitcher. He's an elite arm right now, but you saw signs of him being an elite pitcher. Whitaker settled it. And, um, I, I've never seen, to my knowledge, 10 runs scored without an out. I just not in this era with the bat. I mean, it may have happened somewhere sometime with the older bat or whatnot. But, Lance Triple not getting the bunt down and being able to put that aside and continue to fight through the at-bat and get a base hit, I thought that was the turning point in the inning and then ultimately the turning point in the game. You, you've talked a bunch about just stacking good days but also quality at-bats. And I mean, that game six 6-6 six in the bottom of the six and all of a sudden it's a 10-run game. And after the last two, two games, like you mentioned, just how excited were you to have that kind of inning and kind of give you guys a jolt in the dugout? No, it was, it, there's the game itself, and then there's how I felt they responded today to what was clearly not a pleasant stretch of ball games. It just there's no way to explain how miserable that feels when you go down there and the first game just got away from us, and, and sometimes you have to try to get through it to make sure you have a chance to have a ball game on on Wednesday and um, just the focus of that group to go out there and not how we would have initially drawn it up but they they really answered it, it was a great great team building win we've seen freshmen have some big days around here but then to hit the ball that hard that many times in one day yes the, the freshmen, Triple, Ben, Kabaka, those were the three that were in there today, I think, in the offensive lineup. They show spurts of that, and then the more they can log these at-bats and gauge the secondary pitches. They haven't seen secondary pitches like they see at this level. You just don't see that consistently in high school. You'll see it sporadically, but not on this stage with the repetitive nature that these teams can throw their secondary pitches. So as they continue to calibrate their adjustment, and some of that is in the middle of the pitch itself, you're gonna find them becoming more like you saw today. I mean, that's hard to run days like that all the time, but the quality of the at-bat starts to mature as your pitch recognition gets better. And until you've seen it, it's, it's hard to feel and sense what it looks like and what you can swing at and what you need to try to take. So 
those guys all had good days. I mean, Benny especially, the, the Grand Slam was huge. The two-run, I think it was a two-run homer, was, was big, but then the way that game was going, somebody needed to deliver a significant blow, and you can't deliver a more significant blow than, than that. You talked about the games earlier this week, but it seems like, I don't even going back to Gulf Coast, you guys would hop on teams early, and it seems like you guys maybe cruise, but they they come back. And then the fact that you find yourself tied, be able to have a 10-run inning of it, of turning points the right word to use, but is, that, is this kind of a, a big growing sort of uh, piece of data for you guys going forward? I'm sure you're hoping it is, but. Yeah, I, I sure hope so. Um, we've played some really good teams. I, I, I thought Gulf Coast was offensively so mature and physical and talented and deep. That crew's out of the same mold. Um, you got left, right, left, right, left, right, I think the two righties at the top, and then they stagger it the rest of the way. So you're not feeling matchup looks. Um, all the way back to JMU, they're a, they're a good offensive team. UCF, really good. Pitt, good. South Florida, good. Like it's it's tough to even when you feel like you're in a moment where hey, let's we're going to separate in this one. Yeah, exactly. It just isn't as easy to do that and. Then you go back to pitch execution, which at moments today was not good enough, and it usually starts there. And then the defensive side of making some above average plays, like if you can do that in few pitches, then you should be able to separate and get the heck off the field and come back and find another way to score. So consistently being able to have those ingredients to get off the field, that hasn't been a daily operation for us but we're trying and, and there's guys out there that are still learning and growing this isn't the most experienced group in the world so moments like this for some confidence and some momentum on both sides of it I know the runs were early but um, even for Barfield to go out there that's a confidence building moment we can do all the bullpen work all the drills all the simulations hard to replicate that you know Whitaker he clearly settled that ball game down it was just a good one Ender at third, it's just, I know you talked about it a little bit, just, but just, is, do you think kind of at the hot corner there, there's just not even really time to think and you just <laughs> make a play and like your tools just play and the arm strength plays? Yeah, he's got a nice, like his throwing delivery lends itself well to playing third. And, you know, we we had such a, a need at second base at the time that that made sense. And that's what he played the bulk of the games, I think at, at Missouri, so. He could turn the double play, but that arm, you see it today, and he gets on top of it, and it's easier for the first baseman to handle a throw from that angle on the field when it is a true 12-6 to 6 type delivery, and he does that. And he, the great diving play, the slow rollers, and then the double play to end the game. Like, he looked seasoned over there, and that was that was great. And it, whether that sticks or not, who knows? I mean, Cam's going to be out for a little while, it sounds like, from his weightlifting. I think he tweaked his, his back. Um, but that was that was good to see, good good stuff over there. Diomez, McGuire, and any updates on them? Their availability for you guys? I think we're turning the corner with Holbrook, but then when you have a little handy, like when when do you try to push that? Like you, the last thing you want is to try it, and then was that from sliding into home? Yes, I don't think it was a slide itself. I, Yes, I think it was the like evasion, a little bit of an awkward move to begin the slide. Yeah, Diamas, I think he's way ahead hitting than actually throwing. So you stick those two guys back in there, it, it, it just changes, it, especially the left-handed bat. Like I, you, I'm like a broken record with it, but the left-handed bat it just gives a different look to the to the lineup and to the guys on the mound that are pitching to the lineup have to juggle a little bit more. So. I, it's it's not there yet, but we're we're getting there. Bomb, you've you've talked about the difference between the windup and the stretch. Do you think that's something that's mental or physical or kind of a combination of the two? I think it's a combination. And Chuck worked with him this week. Like we need to be quick to the plate. You have you have to be. And this team will run. They ran today. The stolen base was was a moment in the game that I think that got scored, and they got a stolen base. But the combination of managing the run game with loading properly to mechanically deliver quality pitches. It's that seesaw that you have to balance a little bit to find the happy zone where he can still 
execute pitches. And I told Colton, I'm like, go out there and tell him if he wants to go for the windup, because normally you wouldn't want to do that with runners all over the place because they're going to just extend their lead more. And it's harder to manage it when you're in the windup with base runners. But shoot, we were just trying to give him every opportunity to get out of the mess. So it's, it's a work in progress. There's no other way to do it. He works very hard, chucks with him every day on this stuff. But again, until you get out on that stage and you're feeling it and the adrenaline and the, you know guys are running, it's just the management of all of that is sometimes a slow process. We see flashes of it and then we see reversion back to kind of an inability to self-contain relief. I don't know if you're superstitious, but you wear the green hats tomorrow after a day like this? <laughs> I think we have to. I don't know. We'll ask them. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, of course.